If you own a Steam Deck, you need to know these tips. So in this video, we have got a few little tips and tricks to hopefully make your Steam Deck experience that little bit better. Some of these tricks I wish I knew before I got the Steam Deck, but now I know them, they are really handy for my deck and getting the most out of it. So let's jump into it. Lowering the refresh rate is the easiest way to improve battery life on the Steam Deck. So on the LCD model, you can go from 60 hertz down to 40 hertz for smoother gameplay and longer sessions. While on the OLED, you can pick anything you like, but 40 to 45 is the perfect balance. So you're gonna open the dot menu, and then you're gonna be on the power options. And as you can see here at refresh rate, you're gonna just slide it down to 45. The screen will go black, but then it'll kick back in, and that way you'll get a longer battery life. Again, gameplay is still very smooth. Getting around 47, 49 FPS, you know, quite a busy area here, especially in this game. So that's very impressive. You know, 45 still feels a heck of a lot smoother than 30. So definitely one thing to tinker with if you want to save your battery. Okay, so here's how to set up per game profiles on the Steam Deck. And this is one of the best ways to save battery and make each game run exactly how you want. So first, you're going to launch the game you want to tweak, and the per game settings only show up while you're actually inside the game. Once you're in, press the three dots button on the right to open the quick access menu. Head over to the performance tab, we are already here, and you're going to scroll down until you see use per game profile. You're going to tap that. Okay, now this tells the deck that any settings you change from this point on will only apply to this one game, not your whole system. So from here, you can adjust whatever you want for that specific game. Things like your refresh rate, power limit, performance overlay, or any advanced options you see. The deck saves everything automatically, so you don't need to press or confirm anything. Once you're done, you close the menu and play for a minute or two. If it feels great, perfect, you don't have to touch it again. If you want to tweak it, just open the menu again and adjust until it feels just right for you. And that's it. That's how you set up per game profiles. It's simple, it's powerful. And once you've done it a few times, every new game on the deck feels better right from the start. The Steam Deck isn't just limited to Steam games. So if you switch over to desktop mode, like I am in here, and install Heroic Launcher from the Discover Store, you can add your Epic, GOG, and even itch.io games. So once you add them, they show up in gaming mode just like normal. It's perfect if you've got a backlog of multi-platforms. So here is my Epic and GOG. So I could go here. So I've got Grand Theft Auto Enhanced. And then I just press Install. And then that would download to my Steam Deck. And then once it's downloaded, I would just add that to my Steam library. Okay, so tip four is all about shortcuts. The Steam Deck has a bunch of quick button combos that make life so much easier, especially if you're recording gameplay or creating thumbnails, you know, especially like they do on, you know, the Xbox and PlayStation, how we capture our gameplay, it's press a button and we go. So to take a screenshot on the Steam Deck, we're going to press the Steam button here and then just the R1. And then you'll hear a little button and you get a notification to say that you've done so. Screenshot taken. So if you want to record some video from a game, you're just going to hold the Steam button and press A. And as you can see, you'll get a notification in the corner saying recording has started. Ignore my bad driver. No, 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 no. Sorry, police officer. And then to stop, you're just going to press Steam button and A again. There you go. And done. So view clip and recording. So if I want to, I can go to Steam. And I'll go down to my media button here, my media center, and here we go. There it is. But here's some of the part that most people don't know. Your screenshots automatically sync to your phone through the Steam app if you have it installed. So if you want to share gameplay clips, upload a shot to Air, or even grab a thumbnail image, just open the Steam app and head to the media tab and everything you captured is already there waiting for you. No cables, no transferring, no like emailing or Bluetooth sharing. It's all just there for us, nice and easy. 
So tip five is about the on-screen keyboard, which is way better than people expect. So you can resize it, split it, and my favorite trick is to use the trackpad to type. And it's surprisingly fast and makes desktop mode feel way more usable. So anytime you do want to do some typing on the Steam Deck, to bring the keyboard up instantly, all you need to do is press the Steam button and X at the same time. And voila, here we are. And you can use these beautiful trackpads to help navigate across the menu. Really handy if you get used to it. Yeah, you know, you look at me doing it now, I'm looking a bit heavy handed, but I don't really use them all that much, but I will get there. I will get there. So tip six is simple but powerful. Wishlist everything. Steam will email you or send a notification to your phone uh, when the game goes on sale, it gets a big update, and sometimes even if it actually becomes deck verified. So it basically turns your wishlist into a shopping assistant. So instead of doom scrolling the store every day, Steam tells you when there's something worth looking at. And with how cheap a lot of games are, especially during these sales, this tip alone saves you money without having to think about it. And look, here we are. I've got two games on my wish list here. The Witcher for £2.50 and Cyberpunk for £17.50. Now, I've had Cyberpunk on Xbox and PlayStation. I've never got around to doing it. Um, so, you know what? Let's uh, add it to the cart. Okay, so tip seven is one of the most useful, in my opinion. So if your battery is struggling and getting pretty low, uh, you want to adjust the power limit before touching the graphic settings. So the Steam Deck does give us a wattage slider. So we're going to go down to the performance tab again. And as we scroll down, we can see that we have our TDP limit. And for all the titles and, you know, indie games, we can probably lower this to around 7 watts. This way it should extend our battery life. So... So, for example, dropping a game from, say, 15 watts to 10 watts, still just, you know, it will still look good, but you should see a bigger battery improvement, and it keeps the deck uh, cooler and quieter too, so especially if you're playing in bed with your significant other next to you. Graphics changes when it comes to that, you know, this should really be a last resort. Power limits are the easiest win for us. So my next tip is more or less aimed at the OLED model of the Steam Deck. So this screen gets insanely bright to the point where running it at 100% indoors is just pointless. It's just wasting battery. So at around 50 to 60% brightness, the screen still looks stunning. And again, you save loads of power. So unless you are outside or in direct sunlight, try keeping around the middle of the slider for the best balance. Okay, so tip nine is for anyone who cares about optimization. So the performance overlay can look overwhelming at the higher levels, but level two is the sweet spot. So to access that, we're gonna again go to our performance section and we are gonna scroll down to, where is it? Uh, performance overlay. So level one is just going to show us our refresh rate. If we go up to level two, it's going to show us a bit more. So it's going to show us how much CPU we're using, the GPU, RAM, and VRAM, along with our battery. And if we bump it up to number two, we can see a lot more. So, you know, it takes a bit more on the screen and you know, it gives us more percentages, and level four, where we look at all this and think, wow, and tells, you know, I feel level three and four can become very overwhelming. Um, so, you know, I think number two is just a nice sweet spot. And again, it doesn't take up too much space on the deck screen. So recently, Steam dropped quite a nice little update for the Steam Deck, where we can now download games with the screen off, you know, a bit of a worry if you had the OLED model. So, to make sure that that is activated, we're going to scroll over to our settings and we will go down to power. And it should be here. Yep, yeah, here we go. So finish downloads with display off before sleeping. So if your device enters sleep mode, your games will continue downloading in a low power display off state. Ideal for us because previously we'd have to use Decky and the Magic Black plugin, which would just turn off the screen. but. Having this now is really handy and it is quite literally a game changer for us.
So, and my final tip is quite a simple one, basically. Just restart your deck once a week. So, Steam OS is really good at sleeping and waking, but little bugs and slowdowns do build up over time, especially if you're switching between desktop and gaming mode. So a quick restart will just, you know, reset everything. It fixes sleep drain, any UI lag, and any random stutters. And it just keeps your deck feeling fast and fresh. It's a small thing that will make a big difference. Okay, so if you found any of these tips and tricks really useful, let me know in the comments down below. If you've got any of your own tips and tricks, let us know in the comments below. Share them with the community. Let's, you know, let's help each other out. Okay, so thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll vow.